All right. Welcome to section 2.8. We're about to be done, I promise. So I'm going to teach you two more techniques. They're really easy. And then we're going to move on to the idea of factoring a polynomial completely. So what does that mean? Factoring a polynomial completely means that you're going to do as much as you can to convert a polynomial into a bunch of factors, right? That's your idea every single time. You're going to go from um, a thread of uh, terms, one followed by the other and separated by pluses or minuses, to a combination of factors, right? Everything inside parentheses, maybe two, maybe three, maybe more factors, right? That's the whole thing we do with factoring, reversing that process. So let's take a look at these two techniques. But first, again, as usual, I like to do that. I, I like to go from the multiplication to the polynomial and then we see how we can go back, all right? Let's first pay attention to this uh, multiplication. You see this term 2x that is being multiplied by this expression, it's a trinomial, and we apply distributive property. And as you do it, you will see how the other terms are generated, all right? That's it. Now, what happens if you have this trinomial and this trinomial is not any of those that of those cases that we've learned before, right? So what are we going to do? Okay? So, here's a simple thing, all right? We're going to do this. We're going to uh, take a look at what is in common here right? What's in common? So we see this. Look at this. x, x, and x. At least x with uh, exponent 1, x squared, x cubed. Well, can you see that? At le I'm, I mean, at least there is one x in each of them because I can break it down this way. I can break down this 6 as a 2 times 3 times x times x. Th there's a point in what I'm about to do. Minus, remember that 12 is just like saying 2 times 2 times 3 times x. If you want to see it that way, now let's take a look at what factors each of these terms have in common. They have one number two in common so I'm going to pull it out they have one x one x one x in common so I'm going to pull it out this one have x and x and they could have x one x in common but then we will run out of terms here so I cannot do anything further conclusion the term 2x is common to all of these right so this, for example, is 2x times x squared. This is 2x times 3x. And this is 2x times 6. So the remaining terms or, yeah, terms are going to be placed here. So 2x multiplied by what is 2x cubed? Well, the only need, thing I need is an x squared. Remember, look at that. We got it here. Now I continue. Plus, 2x multiplied by what term is 6x squared? Remember, we had it here. Yeah? Well, you don't see the solution. Well, maybe you, you can see it, but, but we need to multiply this 2 by something that gets a, a 6. Well, it's a 3. And x times what? It's, it's x squared. Well, it's another x. Finally, 2x multiplied by what is negative 12x? Well, the number 2, two times what number? Well, negative 6. And x times what is x? Well, just the 1. And I'm done. That's how you do common factor. All right? Okay. Now, let's take a look at how this one goes because this one goes a little bit farther, a little bit more interesting complex you would say for me it's a little bit more interesting take a look at this expression it's the result of multiplying these two expressions all right now here's the thing if you analyze it again it doesn't correspond to anything that you've seen before it, it, it doesn't even have a common factor 
So what do you do? Well, at least you could group them. That's why this is common factor by grouping. Because, let me do this. I'm going to circle in blue those that have x in common. x and x, right? How about these two? What do they have in common? They have number two in common. Two and two. Sorry, I should have done it with a with a with a red to make it more evident, right? Oh, come on. Look at this. Red here, red here. So the ones in blue have x in common, correct? So I would say, okay, I'm going to pull out that x. Well, I'm, you know, I'm going to rearrange this better. Bx minus x minus 2b plus 2. And now, here we go. Look at that. Uh, actually, I have to do it the, here. Because, well, no, I'm going to bring this down a little bit. Yeah, you will see it bx and minus x. Well, I'm going to just focus on this one. So I pull out x times what has to be multiplied by x to get this? Well, b, right? Minus x times what is x? Well, 1, okay? And now, let's take a look at this. We have a... <clears throat> uh, Two right here and two right here, okay? But I think that I'm going to use the negative instead, right? So negative two, because this goes like this. Negative two times what is this? Well, B. And negative two times what is um, this uh, two? Well, negative one. Right? Negative 2 times 1 is, is 2. Okay. Am I done? Not yet. I need to get to this point. This is where this thing comes in, becomes interesting. Look at this. We have 1 and 2 terms, right? What do these two terms have in common? They have this and this in common, right? So we are going to pull it out. So b minus 1 is the common factor to this 2. This multiplied by what is this whole thing? Well, the remaining x minus 2, and we could get back to it. I know you can pause it, you can rewind it, watch it again, try to understand it, you know, take your time, right? Now the next video will have a couple of exercises where I factor a polynomial completely. All right, see ya.